Hello. I hope people can hear me uh, and I hope people can see me. Uh, this is Ilan. How are you all from all over the world? Uh, it would be great if you could uh, just give me a thumbs up um, to let me know that you can actually hear me. Okay. Uh, let me see. Yes, great. Thank you. Thank you. That really, really helps. Um, you don't know what it's like to be on the other side of a webinar and just um, have no no feedback whatsoever. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Uh, hello from Italy. I see people from all over the world. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, before we get going, I'd like to read you a quick disclaimer. Um, uh, and I hope you can see that on my screen. Uh, Tickmill does not give financial advice. If in doubt, please seek independent financial advice. All comments stated in this webinar uh, uh, do not reflect the opinion of Tickmill as a company. Whilst this presentation has been prepared to the best of our knowledge, Tickmill will not be held liable for any inaccuracies or errors found in the documents. Here's a risk warning. Uh, CFDs are complex instruments and some with high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 70, 74% of retail investors' accounts lose money when trading CFDs with Tickmill UK Limited and Tickmill Europe Limited, respectively. You should consider whether you understand how CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the high risk of losing your money. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, and I'm laughing because I just see Randy coming through. Uh, sounds great from Texas because Randy, I happen to be in Texas. So if you don't know who I am and I'm a new face to you, my name is Ilan Asbel. Uh, I am uh, currently the CEO and uh, one um, and one of the initial founders of of Auto Chartist. I used to be a trader myself on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. So I've got a lot of experience in trading, not only in order charters itself, but in general trading questions. So uh, you can hit me with any uh, any questions you 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 want to ask me. Uh, again, not only about order charters, about trading, uh, etc. Um, obviously, I'm not from Tickmill. I'm not an em employee of Tickmill. I'm here as an independent third party. And one thing I've got to tell you is that I'm not here to sell you anything whatsoever. So put your guards down. We're here to learn, purely learn. No one's here to sell you. The tool I'm going to be showing you is free to use um, uh, from Tickmill. Uh, there are some advanced, uh, enhanced features if you have meet a, um, meet a certain minimum deposit level. But um, uh, other than that, uh, it's, uh, there's, there's really n nothing. No one's trying to sell, sell anything. So let's try, let's try to become better traders. Uh, so today's webinar is going to be focused on how to use support and resistance levels in our trading. Um, and, uh, many people ask me, what are support resistance levels? Uh, the markets are really uh, sorry, if I ever look right, you know that I'm actually just trying to get myself a drawing tool. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the markets are really driven around market psychology. You see these tops and bottoms happening all over the place, right? There's a little peak over here, tops and bottoms. This is all market psychology that's showing here. This is uh, overbought. The price of euro is too high. This is oversold. It's too, it's too low too low, too high, too low, too high, too high again, way too low, uh, going up at the moment, right, in an upward trend. This is all uh, market psychology. And um, there are always these kind of inflection points in the market, right? Uh, whether it's short term or longer term, if we look at the, the daily chart or the weekly chart, we see a lot of these uh, support and resistance lines happening. Uh, on, uh, on this weekly chart over here, you can see very, very clearly that this level, what is that, around uh, 114.630 is a very, very important uh, resistance level, right? Again, uh, these major levels over here, again, these are on the on the weekly charts where a lot of consolidation uh, happened. Um, if we look at this level over here that happened before at 114.63, one fourteen uh, six three. We can see that this uh, there was consolidation at this level again over here. It touched it, didn't break through. Touched it again, broke through it. Touched it again, again, almost reached that level again over here. A lot of consolidation again. This important price level it's uh, is is uh, showing itself to be important once again, even in current market conditions. 
Uh, let's look at another example. If we look at this example here of what around uh, uh, 124, 80, 80, you can see that again in the past, there was a lot of this upward downward movement in the market where the, where, where the market didn't really know what was going on um, uh, with the price of Euro USD. Was it overbought? Was it oversold too much, too little? There's some kind of hesitation, right? And, and this is the kind of thing that we're, we're talking about today is, uh, this market psychology around these very, very important uh, support and resistance levels, right? Support being um, on the downside and the oversold side, resist resistance being on the on the overbought side. And so uh, it becomes quite difficult to to start monitoring a lot of uh, a lot of um, charts uh, using this kind of technique, right? So I see a lot of people opening up uh, a euro, a a pound uh, chart and a um, a JPY chart, and all these charts are you know all over them, all over each other, and uh, you know some people obviously try to uh, try to arrange them nicely. Um, still, a lot of information to look at at the same time um, uh, for for these kind of levels. Now, um, what we're trying to do at AutoChartist is really simplify the trading process. So um, once you install the AutoChartist expert uh, advisor and uh, risk calculator, uh, those come as one installable executable. Uh, you'll you'll get this auto charts expert uh, the EA on your expert advisor section of your MetaTrader platform, and um, and so what one needs to do is uh, uh, drop there uh, drop your um, your your uh, auto expert advisor onto the chart and don't worry it's called an expert advisor but it does not trade for you right it does not trade on your behalf um, and so. Uh, what it does is it comes up on the screen and it shows you all the different trade setups that are available to you. So now if you if you uh, were in attendance on our previous uh, webinar that we had um, uh, a, a few weeks ago, uh, would, we would have run you through a lot of the, uh, you know, the very basics of auto charts and what it does. And today's presentation is really around how do you pick the uh, best, so to speak, the best um, uh, 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 trade setups um, uh, based on past performance. Now, again, I'm going to give you another little disclaimer so that the lawyers don't have a heart attack. Um, uh, past performance may not be indicative of future performance, uh, but that's the legal, but yet that's the best thing we have to go on, right, is past performance. So how do we use past performance of these different trade setups to help you figure out what are the uh, potentially the best uh, 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 trades uh, uh, moving forward, right? And so there's a few links that are well, one link and one technique that I that I want to show you. The first thing is that if you click on this uh, little world icon um, over here on the AutoCharts EA, there is this very important link called Performance Statistics. If you copy and paste uh, that link into a browser you will get a screen like this which um, uh, shows you the past performance uh, statistics right now um, before i discuss them i want to show you what it actually means what these past performance uh, statistics actually mean right uh, let me just fix one or two things on my notification panel here we go so let's see what what, what they actually mean so here is an example on um, uh, NZD. So as you can see here on NZD, uh, we have a breakout triangle, which means the price moved up and down between these two converging support and resistance lines, and there was a breakout. And AutoCharts gives you this target area, right, of where where uh, technical analysis theory says the price is going to go. So. What the past performance statistics measure is how often in the last six months did the price hit the target region, right? So let me draw that for you visually. That means when order charters provides this target region on the screen, how often in the past did the price 
move into that target region, right? So that is all we measure. Now, remember one thing about having a profitable trade. A profitable trade is not only about your entry, it's also about your exit, right? So we do not take into account volatility before the price reaches it or the price could have gone down and up like this because that's all about your stop level. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to measure the ability of these technical chart patterns and support resistance levels, um, the ability of these uh, trade setups uh, to project the future, right? And independent of your stop level, right? So your stop loss strategy could be a, you know, a fixed stop loss. It could be a, a trailing stop. It could be a moving average as a stop loss or a, the parabolic SAR as a stop loss. Man, I've, I've seen, um, a, hundred different uh, stop loss uh, strategies that people use and so obviously we can't measure every single one of them so we try to be independent of stop loss so the measure is simple i try to repeat again how often in the last six months did the price hit the target level right independent of stop loss <clears throat> so now let's look at those statistics <clears throat> So we look at those statistics and you can see that it's um, uh, split up into three sections, chart patterns, breakout key levels, approaching key levels. In fact, for chart patterns, it's only around breakouts, right? Breakouts are the chart patterns that come up with these colored, uh, uh, colored arrows, right? So breakouts are colored arrows and, um, e and emerging patterns are these, um, uh, uh, uh gray uh gray arrows right so if we look at at this performance stats we split up between uh breakout chart patterns breakout key levels and approaching key levels right and in each one of them you can actually click on those statistics and to drill in so let's see what they look like oh this doesn't look like a very useful iframe i guess we we need to relook at how we do that iframe all right anyway uh let's let's carry on so you can see that the uh uh, these chart pattern uh, analysis was done between, uh, looks like February 4th and uh, August 2nd. And we identified 44,000, 44 and a half thousand uh, trade setups using technical chart patterns, of which 29,000 hit their target region. So that's 65% overall. But I don't really want to focus on the 65%, right? What I really want to do is I want to focus on the uh, the the details um, of um, of it, right? So when I start looking at um, the breakdown by pattern, right, we can see that the channel downs and channel ups have been doing well. The descending triangles, double top, double bottom, uh, have been doing very well. Uh, head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders also very well. Rectangles pretty well. The rising wedges, triangles, falling wedges, flags, ascending triangles haven't been doing so well. Although ascending triangles at uh, at 69%, right? Similarly, we have a breakdown based on symbol, right? So, um, uh, you know, we can see that we've been doing really well on uh, on oil. Um, NZDJPY, there's quite a few high ones at 68, GBP czar 69, CAD JPY. So it shows you there's a complete breakdown and complete transparency of where the statistics actually lie. All right. So uh, a very, very uh, interesting one is actually uh, the uh, hour of the day. And this is something that I want to, I want to highlight over here. So, um, uh, this um these statistics here are at uh, looks at like gmt uh, plus plus three right and so we can see that the stats are much better for technical chart patterns uh between um uh, 6 a.m gmt plus three and 11 or 12 a.m gmt plus three right so the stats are much better this is during the European uh, session, right? And the open of the US session. And this is a, a very important uh, thing that one should note is that uh, the theory of support and resistance and these overbought, oversold levels, they're really based on market psychology. Okay. And the question you need to ask yourself is when does market psychology really play out? Does it play out when there's uh, 50 people or 100 people trading the instrument 
or does it play out when there's 100,000 people trading the instrument, right? So, um, uh, and, and I think you know, you know the answer to that, is that market psychology can really best be measured when there is a larger amount of people uh, looking at those financial instruments and trading those financial instruments. And so it just makes sense that during highly liquid uh, periods of the day, uh, uh, any uh, projection based on technical chart patterns certainly do a lot better. Again, the disclaimer, past performance may not be indicative of future performance, um, you know, but certainly uh, the six months, um, and we have this rolling window of six months that moves along, um, shows that, you know, the performance is far better during that time of day. I'm going to move on to uh, the, the oh, so just to be clear what that was based on, um, if I go back to my MetaTrader and I unselect everything except for the completed chart patterns, that is what um, those uh, things were based on. So right now on technical chart patterns, we have NZD, USD, one hour triangle up. Uh, we have a triangle uh, down over there and we can see the projection uh, down to that level over here around 104, uh, 500, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're gonna move on to a different um, uh, one. We're gonna move on to key levels breakouts. Key level breakouts are the horizontal levels. Right now, it looks like there's only one in the market that we are looking at at the moment, and that is this uh, uh, key level on Euro pound. That's the only one we have at the moment that's really playing out. Let me zoom out a little more. Uh, you can see it's actually a very, very good one. Um, uh, it's touched this price level numerous times in the past uh, 0, uh, 90. Uh, 90 yeah so a uh, really really good uh, resistance level over here and um, what's even nicer is that it's actually broken through very strongly through the resistance level you can see this breakout candle really really strong and the projection up to uh, that that um, point over there so let's go back to the statistics and see what uh, order charter says about past performance of key levels so if we look at the past performance of key levels we can see very quickly that there's far fewer of them than technical chart patterns, right? Just under 3,000 of them were identified over the last six months, but 2,200 of them reached the uh, target level, right? That's a 74% uh, uh, target level. But again, let's not focus on that. Right? Let's focus on some of the other aspects. So particularly, I wanna focus on the hour of, hour of day. Right? Again, we can see that although um, the, the statistics look much better in general. Again, uh, we note the very, very high statistical probabilities again um, uh, at uh, 6 a.m. GMT plus 3 through to 3 p.m. GMT plus 3. Obviously, still quite high later on, but you can see during um, uh, the, the Asian session, uh, a lot weaker um, average than the than the um, than the European and US session. Again, the breakdown by um, uh, by uh, the the symbols themselves and which ones have been doing well, which ones have been doing uh, badly. Looks like we've been doing really really well on the stocks. Uh, stocks 50. What Euro NZD at 87%? Well, that is uh, <laughs> that's incredible. I don't often see um, things like that. Um, yeah, there are some uh, exotics here. GBP, SEK, GBP, uh, NOC. Um, these are great stats, but very difficult to make money on these because the spreads are normally uh, very very high on those. So the cost of the trade is quite high. But things like USD, Swiss franc, 84%. That's um, that's really, really uh, interesting uh, to look at those kind of things. Um, again, trying to give you a picture of what all of that looks like. And then finally, I wanna to move to the uh, key level approaches, uh, which is a very, very high statistical average of around uh, 82%, uh, percent, uh, but I wanna make a, a note about that one. And what we're looking at there is we're looking at these uh, approaching uh, key levels. Let's see if there's any around at the moment for us. Ah, there's at least one on the Euro USD. And what does that look like? Oh, huh. Okay, so that looks like over there. And you can see that Auto Charters did a pretty good job of identifying that. You would have never seen that uh, with a human eye. 
many times hitting that level here, consolidation, again consolidation, again twice hitting that level and again consolidation. So one, two, three, four, five, six important points and uh, order chart has identified the fact that there's been a turnaround and now moving up towards um, towards that level of uh, about a one, uh, 12, 900, right? Okay, so um, let's look at the stats on the approaching key levels. So approaching key levels, uh, an average of 82%, uh, just under 10,000 of them identified, uh, 8,000 of them hitting their target level over the last six months. And the percentages are, are really, really high. Um, it looks like the, uh, the, the end of day um, uh, opportunities that have been identified, only 73 of them uh, over the last six months, but 70 of them hit their target level. Uh, an absolutely uh, incredible statistic uh, for past performance. Again, again, past performance may not be indicative of a future performance, so note. Uh, and once again, uh, you can see the performance by hour of the day and um, the performance for every uh, type of instrument. Now, I want to point something out that's very, very important on these emerging uh, key levels. Although well, these statistics are really, uh, really high. Um, the, the emerging uh, uh, key levels <clears throat> normally have a very, uh, <clears throat> should we say, uh, a, a small time frame of opportunity through which to trade them. In fact, a, 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 a prediction area uh, 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 this big is very unusual. Normally, um, the um, the, the identification is, you know, is in, you know, the, the, the 10 to 20 pip range, right? So much, much closer. The only reason this identification was done um, so, so early was because there was this very definitive turnaround and very distinctive uh, move, uh, right, without any uh, noise. Um, however, if uh, there was uh, more noise in the market where there was a movement up and down, chances are we would have only identified uh, this opportunity when it was much closer. So, <clears throat> so yes, they're, they're statistically, uh, uh, based on past performance, uh, more likely to hit their target region, but you really have to be watching your screen very, very carefully uh, to be able to take advantage of these uh, of these uh, uh, emerging emerging key levels. Okay, man, I have been flying because there's a lot to get through in only uh, you know 30 to 35 minutes. <laughs> I hope everyone has been keeping up. If you haven't, this webinar will be recorded or is being recorded, so um, uh, we'll be posting that uh, on the website uh, pretty soon. Okay, so. <clears throat> How do you go about uh, choosing uh, the best one? So I think I've given you uh, an idea of, uh, you know, those performance statistics. <clears throat> um, and so what I've, I've seen people actually doing is going to those performance stats, printing them out and actually having them on a piece of paper next to, uh, next to themselves, so next to them on, on next to their keyboard uh, by the trading terminals and deciding, uh, you know, which patterns to trade based on those performance stats. Now, if you are a, uh, a, a, a VIP customer, uh, then there is an additional feature that you get that does all this work for you. <clears throat> so let me come back to that in just a moment. But first thing I wanna show you is something that we don't have performance statistics on, but I feel uh, that it is a very important thing for you to look at. Okay, um, and that is uh, this thing of uh, big movements, uh, this, this trade setup called big movements. Let me erase everything else out of here. And I'm gonna show you big movements, right? So <clears throat> at the moment, uh, we've identified a few of these big movements in the market. So we can see Euro NZD, he has a very big movement that happened. Uh, let me move this. I wonder if I can move this uh, thing out the way. There we go. All right. You can see a very large movement happened on Euro NZD. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's look at the USD JPY. Oh, yeah. Again, a really, really big uh, movement, an exceptionally large movement happening there. Uh, let's see. CAD JPY, that too. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I can look at. Odd Swiss franc. Uh, let's see. Oh, also. <clears throat> really, really big uh, movements happening right now uh, on the daily candles, right? So a lot of market movement happening right now. 
Now, the reason I wanna I wanna show you that is because I feel that um, these are misunderstood in terms of the value. What I found is that people are very focused on the you know this end point. What's going to happen now? Okay, there's been this exceptional movement on on uh, Australian dollar on the daily chart. Uh, what's going to happen uh, going forward, right? I also want to draw your attention to something else, and that's the fact that um, where the movement started is also normally a very important level, right? Um, and so in this situation, you know, something around these level has been important in the past, right? You can see it quite clearly in the past. So although we haven't picked it up as a, uh, you know, it's historical, right? So we may have picked it up in the past. Right now, it's not uh, recognized as, as a support or resistance level in uh in order charters because the price hasn't turned back towards this level, right? It hasn't turned back towards that line um, and it didn't break through that line, right? So, so there's nothing relevant tradable right now, but I want you to keep that in mind. And the reason why I want you to keep that in mind is that I want you to note again on the statistics how when we look at where the true value is in all these trade setups, a lot of them have to do with patterns and trade setups that have horizontal components to them. So think about the key levels, right? Those are all about horizontal levels. Ascending triangles, that's a horizontal pattern. Descending triangle is. Double tops, double uh, bottoms, those are uh, horizontal patterns. Head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders rectangles these are all horizontal patterns yes we happen to have some good channels in the last six months but you can see by by far the majority of the patterns that have been doing really well are all based around horizontal uh, uh, levels right okay and this is very important to keep in mind and so i want to 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 point you to the fact that even if even if you you don't uh, you're not a VIP customer and you don't have this minimum probability filter, which I'll go into in just a moment. You can do really well for yourself by uh, looking at these completed chart patterns, emerging uh, and uh, approaching key levels, right? And then in your mind's eye, so to speak, not looking at these uh, triangles, right? Don't look at the triangles or the pennants or the channels or any of that, right? Simply look at um, the uh, the 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 patterns that have these horizontal levels, right? So that's a shortcut uh, for you. Of course, um, uh, uh, that's not rigorously looking at the historical performance, more taking uh, my uh, personal uh, experience into account. Okay. Now, um, in the last few minutes, uh, let me, uh, well, I want you to firstly think about any questions you have for me. Uh, so please go ahead and, and type them into the into the chat screen. I've got my colleagues uh, uh, from Order Charters as well as uh, uh, my colleagues from uh, Tickmill uh, waiting on the on the on the on the chat window to start answering any questions. But in the meantime, um, if you're a VIP customer and you can contact uh, uh, Tickmill's customer support to ask them what it is you need to do in order to become a VIP. But if you're a VIP customer, you have this minimum probability drop down. Okay, so what this minimum probability drop down does for you is that it takes the current uh, trading setups that are available on, on the call at the moment, uh, well, that you've got on the screen at the moment um, that I'm talking about now, and, um, uh, and it takes the performance statistics and really what it does is it combines the two together to do the work for you, right? So these are all the uh, uh, opportunities at the moment. If I, and there's uh, what, I guess two pages of them, right? So a little bit halfway into the second page. If I filter that to 60%, then hopefully that will reduce it a bit. So uh, only reduce it by one or two. So most of the opportunities right now are over 60%. If I go to 65%, let's see what happens. Whoa, it brings it right down. Okay, from, from one and a half pages down to only four opportunities, right? Uh, uh, based on, again, these are based on past performance, right? So the opportunities based on past performance that you should be looking at right now is example on EURUSD, which we showed earlier, um, this channel on uh, CAD JPY, oh, which already is a little late. It looks like <laughs> we identified it uh, 
two days ago. Uh, and it, it's about to hit its uh, its target level. Dang, I, I missed that one. Okay, um, Euro uh, uh, GBP. So uh, this one, we still got time to trade. Um, uh, that's the one we looked at earlier too. There's been a strong breakout on the daily charts and the price is moving up on daily. And then uh, pound uh, USD uh, looks like that on the hourly chart. Okay, so we still have time to go. On the hourly chart, looks like it's bounced a bit and then come up again. Again, uh, if we zoom into that, what's wrong with this pattern? The breakout is totally insignificant. Uh, if you look at this, uh, look at this, uh, look at this breakout. Man, that's that's not a breakout. You can't trade a pattern like this. Uh, if this comes up, you have to wait for confirmation candle uh, short before you take an opportunity like this. This is not a confirming candle. In fact, a confirming candle was the other way. Uh, this is uh, not a not a good uh, quality uh, pattern there. Okay. Um, so again, if you are a um, if you are a, a, a VIP customer, then you get this uh, drop down. Again, you can take it up to 70%. Uh, you can take it up to uh, 75%. And um, at that point, we start telling you we are not uh, magicians at order charters at 80%. Oh, there's something that did happen over 80% of the time. But really, um, if you set your uh, minimum probability to 80%, uh, man, <clears throat> uh, you're, you're hoping for a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> really, let's be honest. Um, so uh, you know, so so normally 60, 65% is normally a good uh, uh, kind of uh, measure for you to go on. You just want to try and skew the odds a little bit, but mostly use uh, your mind and your your vision to filter out the um, the, 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 the 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 trades uh, to the best quality trades. Okay, so now I have a question um, from Ken. Ken has asked me the toughest question a presenter could possibly have. Can you show us one of your favorite setups with stop loss and take profits? <laughs> Thank you, Ken, for putting me on the spot on that one. All right, uh, let me uh, let me let me show you what I do. Firstly, I want to tell you that I do not look at 15-minute and 30-minute intervals. Um, in fact, uh, I don't particularly like looking at four-hour intervals either. I only like, like looking at H1 and D1. Um, um, uh, I personally will not uh, look at the chart patterns right now. Uh, I would look at the uh, the horizontal support resistance levels. Okay, and and so if you look at this uh, Euro USD uh, hourly chart over here, um, we can see what this looks like. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's think about taking this uh, trade right now while we while we're all together on uh, on the line. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to take my order chartist uh, risk calculator. I'm going to drag and drop it onto my chart. And we're going to do a whole nother webinar on the risk calculator. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my stop loss. Oh, it's guessed my stop loss very well. I'm going to go long on this. I'm going to set my stop loss at this uh, price that it gave me here uh, at 101, uh, 103.26. Okay. Uh, it looks like. Uh, this take profit is what? Okay, 120 pips uh, away. All right. So I have $5,000, $50,000 in my account. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna risk 2% uh, of my equity on that. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna calculate it 0 0.71. So if I uh, set my uh, position over here, I'm gonna move that window. I'm going to set my value to 0 0.71. I'm going to set my stop loss uh, to uh, this price over here. Uh, and I'm going to buy at market. Okay. And then I'm going to edit that. Uh, and um, uh, uh, did I not set my uh, take profit? Sorry, I didn't set my take profit at, uh, let's say, one point. Uh, one two eight five five. Uh, set my take profit. Okay, so there we go. That is how I set up my trade. Why I use the risk calculator is because 
Um, this is Euro USD. Uh, although I know it's only $10 a pip, I want to make sure that even at the strange uh, stop loss level of 141 pips, I'm only risking 2% of my equity. Uh, you know, so uh, that's about $1,000 of my $50,000 account. I'm only I'm only risking $1,000 on my trade um, uh, uh, with the stop loss at this at this price. Um, I hope that made sense to you, Ken. Um, uh, okay. Um, okay. So, uh, good question from uh, Jose. Uh, Jose, um, or is it Jose or Jose? I'm not sure. I apologize if I, uh, you know, in Texas, uh, J O S E is uh, Jose. Uh, maybe in other places it's uh, it's Jose, and uh, maybe in Portugal. But uh, anyway, um, uh, Jose. Uh, so, the, you know. Uh, Jose is asking me which is a better time frame to do technical analysis: five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, H1, H4, W1, etc. And why? Okay. So Jose, th this this is a loaded question. Um, there is no better or worse. It depends on your style of uh, trading. Um, and before I answer that, I'm just going to uh, quickly close my position while it's in profit. Uh, made a quick 15 bucks there. Um, the reason I want to do that is because Tickmore kindly donated $50,000 into my account uh, for this presentation. I believe it's real money. So I don't want to lose their money for them. So I just quickly take some profit there of $12. Uh, Tickmore staff owe me a drink when I, you know, when I come visit them in my offices later on. Okay. <laughs> anyway, jokes aside. Uh, so um, uh, uh, th there is no uh, best thing. It depends on your style of trading. Okay. So if you're looking at a 15 minute chart okay you uh, need to be monitoring the market all the time okay so because these movements are so dramatic and so quick right um, uh, you know if you're a full-time trader then you can trade 15 minute charts and 30 minute charts even one or, or five minute charts the truth is that many people uh, uh, cannot uh, monitor the markets 24 hours a day and even for two hours a day, uh, you know, dedicated to their screens, right? Only professional traders can do that. So, you know, as a retail trader, I, if you're a retail trader that that has a, a job and a life and kids and, and, and stuff like that, then you need to seriously consider whether you want to trade such short-term volatility, right? If you do, that's awesome. Um, Auto charters can help you with that. If you look at the filters, uh, you can, you know, add on things like uh, 15 minute and 30 minute uh, uh, time intervals um, into your uh, scanning feature, and that'll uh, bring back a lot more charts. Um, uh, but, uh, but again, those are big movements, very short term, high risk. The other reason why I personally only trade the longer time frames is because uh, for me, I'm all about these overbought and oversold levels, right? Support and resistance. And I don't believe that market psychology plays out in 15 minutes or 30 minutes. I believe market psychology takes um, days or weeks or months to play out. Uh, so, um, again, this is my personal view. I don't want to instill it on you. That's my style of trading, right? If you are a a uh, statistical mean arbitrage trader that's just looking for minor changes and, and anomalies in price graphs, then looking at the daily charts or the weekly charts is totally useless. However, if you're like me, looking for longer term uh, movements, longer term overbought, oversold levels based on the kind of macroeconomic stuff, then you look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, longer term uh, price, uh, price charts. So I think to summarize my answer is, you need to understand what type of trader you are, what style of trader you are, and make sure it fits into your lifestyle. And lifestyle is really important because if you create yourself a trading regime that you cannot be consistent with, right? Because your trading regime needs you to wake up at three o'clock every morning and trade until 12 o'clock the next day, uh, you know, that's something that's difficult to do every day, you know, for the next five years. What you want to do is come up with a trading uh, style and lifestyle that fits into your uh, into your life, right? Whether it be your work or your or your kids and and, and family or other uh, responsibilities, right? Make sure whatever you do is um, is sustainable. 
Right? I hope that's a very long answer, but I hope that that answers the question. Um, there's no other questions coming up. Uh, 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 thank you everyone for for attending and for your questions. Um, and Ken, thanks again for putting me on the spot with that with that trade. Uh, really appreciate that one. Um, this webinar is being uh, recorded uh, and uh, or has been recorded, and so um, it'll be posted very soon. I hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and I hope to see you um, at the next uh, webinar. Have a good one. Bye.